Carbohydrates are the most abundant compounds found in nature. Starch in plants and glycogen in animals are carbohydrates serving as storage forms of glucose. They are also called saccharides and they can be classified as monosaccharide when there is only one unit, disaccharide or polysaccharides. Among the functions of polysaccharides, we can use them as source of energy, as starch, and also as part of the structure of a plant, like cellulose. Carbohydrates attached to proteins or lipids in cell membranes help the cell-to-cell -cell recognition and also the recognition of specific molecules triggering physiological processes such as fertilization, cell growth, and immune processes. Something that all carbohydrates will have in common is the presence of a carbonyl group and also that all other carbons will be bonded to hydroxyl groups. According to what is the functional group present, we define monosaccharides as aldoses because of the aldehyde group or ketoses because of the ketone group. Monosaccharides are also classified according to the number of carbons present. If it is three carbons, that will be a triose. If it is four carbon, that will be a tetrose. Five carbons are pentoses and six carbons are hexoses. For an aldose, carbon number one is always the aldehyde group, and for a ketose, the carbonyl group is always carbon number two. There are many carbohydrates with six carbons and five carbons, but for our class, we only need to memorize the structures of glyceraldehyde, dehydroxyacetone, ribose, glucose, galactose, and fructose. These are the simplest carbohydrates possible, glyceraldehyde and dehydroxyacetone, which are not following the rule of ending with OSE. Glyceraldehyde is an aldose and dehydroxyacetone is a ketose. A simple molecule can be identified as chiral if a carbon is bonded to four different groups. With exception of glycine, all amino acids are chiral. Also, with the exception of dehydroxyacetone, all carbohydrates are chiral. Because four different groups are attached to carbon number two on glyceraldehyde, carbon number two is a chiral carbon, and there are two possible structures two different isomers of this compound. Dehydroxyacetone is no chiral, and there is only one structure, only one molecule, because there are plane of symmetry in dehydroxyacetone. Chiral compounds lack a plane of symmetry and exist as a pair of enantiomers in either a right-handed V form or a left-handed L form. Enantiomers can be defined as molecules that are the mirror image of one another, no superimposable. Ordinary light consists of electromagnetic waves traveling in all directions. When ordinary light is passed through a polarizer, only waves in one plane get through. This is known as plane polarized light. When polarized light passes through a solution of a chiral compound, it can deviate the light certain angle. The instrument, a polarimeter, is used to determine the difference between substances that can be enantiomers 
or that can be diastereomers. Optically active molecules can deviate polarized light. Each one of the pair of enantiomers can rotate polarized light the same amount but on opposite direction. There are two different ways to represent glyceraldehyde. In this case, we are using wedges coming out of the board and dashes going towards the back of the board. The horizontal line in the fissure represents the wedges coming out of the board and the vertical line represents the dashes going towards the back of the board. Fissure projection has become the standard to represent chiral molecules in biochemistry, very useful for carbohydrates and also for amino acids. L-glyceraldehyde and D-glyceraldehyde are a pair of enantiomers, mirror image of one another, no superimposable. The D comes from the orientation of the OH on carbon number 2. This is to the right and this one is to the left. The designation of D comes from the Latin dextro, which means right, and the designation of L comes from levo, that in Latin means left. However, there is no correlation on the sign of the direction in which a substance deviates the light, which means a D compound can deviate the polarized light to the left, and vice versa. Here we have the Fischer projection of three different hexoses. Glucose and galactose are aldoses. Fructose is equitose. They are the D isomer in all cases because the orientation of the chiral carbon that is the furthest from the carbonyl has the hydroxyl group pointing to the right. We need to look for other similarities and differences between those hexoses. First, they are all hexoses with the same molecular weight. They all have the same number of carbon, hydrogens, and oxygens. They are all hexoses, but glucose and galactose are aldoses, and fructose is a ketose. Galactose and glucose are epimeres, which means that they are only different because of the orientation of the hydroxyl group on carbon number 4.